Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Svetlana's Smart Moves. This time, uh, we're not talking about Mr. Anand like last week, but because it was just Halloween, we're talking about Chucky. Yeah, yeah that's, that's one way to put You don't even know what I'm referring to because you're far yeah. too young. There is like this uh, quite famous horror movie with Chucky, the murder uh, doll. So yeah, uh, uh, it's it's in the 80s. It's a cult. I've never watched it, but everybody knows about it anyway. And Chucky is, of course, the friendly name for Mr. Vladimir Ivanchuk. Not Vladimir, but Vasily, but close enough. <laughs> it's okay. But Vasily oh Ivanchuk, that's true, that is his nickname. That was terrible. <laughs> okay. Oh boy, it's oh fine. boy. <laughs> so Such yeah, nice in today's... Movie. Anyway, yeah lesson we'll be looking at some um actually specific type of adventures games we'll be looking at sicilian miniatures so um the games we'll see today arise all from the sicilian defense and we'll look at some key ideas which um appear a lot in this opening okay. and uh, we'll learn these ideas through the games of vasily ivanchuk he had a lot of miniatures because he's a very attacking and creative player um, I really love his style of play, um, mm -hmm. and he has very funny interviews. Do you do you like his styles and, and um, games, Arnie? I think we were talking about this. Either it was you or somebody else, but one yeah. of my absolute favorite uh, videos of his is when uh, he is yeah. receiving the prize, the first prize, I think, even, for Rapid mm -hmm. Tournament. And he's playing checkers with Bado Yobaba before. So he's yeah. rushing to the, to, to the uh, podium, has the... Po uh, the the medal or whatever it is in his hands and yeah. while he's on the podium and the pictures are taken and the music is playing and the video is taken he's, he's like, thinking about checkers and then he rushes back to Bado Yubaba and you see him play a couple of moves and he wins immediately yeah because he thought it's, it's it was a nice combination too he might be a good checkers player too he might be just combinating in his brain non-stop all the time yeah. for all his life which just makes him kind of funny and adorable on the other hand too yeah yeah so this true. is my favorite what is your favorite interview um mm, yeah that, that i i really like that video but he also has one where he's explaining uh or he's explaining his um his game to someone and somebody just asks him like oh how was the game and then he goes on for like a whole analysis. I think they expected like just like a two word answer that, oh, the game was good. Was but, good yeah, but then he goes on and like it ends up being like a 10 minute analysis of the game. Um, and uh, it was really, it was really a nice one too. Oh, that's cute. And then very recently, that's a bit of a sad story. Of course, he is, he has his own YouTube channel. He's streaming uh, oh, games okay. and he was analyzing a game. I think it was even one against Magnus. And in the background, you hear... That was not long ago, just a couple of months. You hear in the background the sirens of the um, oh, attacking alarm, uh, like mm -hmm. bombing alarm or uh, airplanes or something like that. And he's just continuing with his analysis mm -hmm. as if nothing is happening. Yeah. <sighs> well, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of uh, things about Mr. Vasily and Vanchuk. I'm sure you <laughs> at home know some stories too. Let's get into the Sicilian now. Yeah, so here, um, this game, he was playing white against Gary Kasparov. So these games will be miniatures. They'll be very um, short, but, um, you Fair know, enough. he here he defeated another legendary player, Gary Kasparov. And um, your favorite, if, by the way. One, yeah, one of I your think favorites. Yeah. yeah, he's probably if I had to pick one, he would probably be my favorite mm -hmm. world champion. Um, but um, here you'll see that Ivanchuk was winning here in under 20 moves. Um, and um, if I you know Gary Kasparov, that. you would know that he um, loved the Nidorf. You know, he, that was his thing. He played it a lot Signature, and made it yeah. popular. Um, and Ivanchuk here chooses, um, it chooses an interesting line to go against it. It's F4. So it's not the most popular line. Usually we see Bishop E3 or Bishop G5. Um, but it is a common pawn setup anyway, so the pawn goes here a lot. Regardless, it's just a bit of a change of um, change of moves. Um, all the moves I'm making are very common Sicilian moves for both sides. Um, queen c7 is common. Um, queen f3 is common to later go and um, long castle and also to put the queen more on the queen side. Um, so in these lines, basically, we're going to have... Um, 
we're going to have an attack on the Black King in a lot of the cases. Um, and here are there are also some important kind of tactics to know uh, that arise a lot in such openings like the Night Dwarf, sometimes the Dragon too. But um, um, but here, um, yeah, the, obviously Gary Kaspar wouldn't fall for these tactics. Mm -hmm. And in the game, he played Bishop G7. But uh, it's also um, pretty important to know what happens on things like uh, Knight G4. On Knight G4, how do you think uh, White can take the initiative right away? It's a bit oh, there's the say. possibility. Well, can you just play F5? No. Uh, not F5 because, I mean, there's probably Knight E5. Knight E5, true. Or even just take, maybe even take the bishop. I'm not sure. Yeah, that But would, it's just because... Have... But then I would have yeah. played g6, and I'm not sure. Yeah, probably it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. But it's the knight just left on f6, and it exposed some important squares. True. So what about knight d5 now? Exactly, and knight d5 actually wins here. Ooh. I know that's uh, that's quick, but Both. it does win. And the point is that ah, okay, I see it. Um, is that there's knight b5 no i didn't see and... that <laughs> <laughs> and uh the and uh, i mean it gets uh, the queen gets trapped it's not oh, just oh yes but always be alert for these in the sicilian they're very like common tactics um and on queen here there's a different win it's this one queen c3 and right away we're attacking here and here at the same time, and both cannot be defended. So, you know, with just one move that looks pretty natural, like knight g4, you can already actually be losing in the um, in the Sicilian. So um, those tactics are always important to watch out for, especially the d5 square, always one of the most important um, squares in the Sicilian. So in the game, he played h3 anyway to prevent um, these bishop g4 and knight g4 ideas for the future black plays e5 takes takes and this next move was really creative and interesting what do you think white played oh well hmm how about i'm castling long now you're very you're a very brave soul by castling long so you're giving up a or a fool <laughs> no it's it's <laughs> Let's call it brave, and uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's not it's not castling long. That's a bit too risky. That's weird. So good. That's a bit too risky. So what about having this old idea of knight b five? Yeah, here unfortunately it's not working. If we were already castled, <laughs> then it would be super nice, and it would have worked. But here it doesn't because of um, because yeah, our knight just doesn't have a check just yet. You know, like there's no knight c7 and no knight d6. Mm. If like one of them was possible, then it would be super nice. But it's not Dang really it. there yet. And one move really matters. The sadness. So here, you're right though that um, we don't do anything about this knight. We keep it on d4 for now. That's what that's what happened in the game, yeah. but he did it differently. He made oh. a counter. What about queen g3? Queen g3, also a very, very common idea, I must say. Um, here I'm a bit, like, not worried about it, but there's knight h5. And I'm yeah, like, queen h2, but it doesn't really benefit. Yeah, and, like, the, it doesn't benefit the queen, exactly. Hmm. Getting out of ideas. What else could we do here? I would still cast along, I think. That's my last yeah. words. <laughs> last words. So what is... So, oh my, what? It's Bishop H6. I mean, um, it's not even a sacrifice, but it's still a creative idea yeah. to make this trade of knight for a bishop. And normally in the Sicilian, we really don't like giving away our dark squared bishop because that's one of the main defenders, one of the main attackers. But here, um, we're kind of forcing this trade of bishop for knight. And... It's also, um, it, it's in exchange for that queen invading on the king side. And uh, it's in exchange for that important, uh, for those important squares. So now mm -hmm. that we already know 
which square was important. Do you see what's the tactical idea that white is going for? Well, we want to checkmate, I guess. But I True. don't know how we shall do this now. Well, of course, I mean, it stings in the eye, right? It's knight d5 has to work somehow. Yeah, it is knight d5. That's a first good move. And um, now there's a check. Now we queen play b4. A5. Perfect, b4. And uh, I mean, it's looking like the queen actually is running out of options. Um, so oh, Gary no. played okay. queen d8 and the game continued like that. But there was only one defense. There was only one defense for black, which was not moving even the queen. It was playing this. Oh, gosh. Only move. But it still looks pretty horrible. So I honestly wouldn't blame anybody for not going for this. But it's just because after this, like, equal trade, the rook is just look like it's just in a horrible position and we don't know if it will ever even move away from there right so yeah. it's getting trapped there yeah, in but the corner. I, I agree that this is the best because from what i just seen there is like the game is already over yeah i mean it's um yeah this was best but um and queen d8 leads to it completely being over and we see that yeah. like it's so quick how you know how this game ended in the Sicilian just because that knight was allowed on d5. So that's one of the ideas that I wanted to emphasize. And after queen d8, did you see which tactic just ends it? Oh, well, it's knight to e7, right? Perfect, exactly. Yeah. And um, the, he still continued playing because, after all, he has two pieces for the queen. And, yeah. you know, he's not the type of person to just give up. Yeah, but you just um, don't want to believe it either, too. After yeah, 17 because moves or 14, I don't know. yeah, it's too quick. Um, and as we see, it's not really a huge imbalance. If we had three pieces for the queen, then the game could actually be competitive. Yeah, but two pieces, mm, it's uh, very rare that it's enough compensation. Usually, it depends on the king. Yeah, when it comes to queen versus pieces imbalances, usually the main determining factor of who is better is the king. So whoever's king is under attack, that's the side that needs to be a lot more careful so yeah but here it's only two pieces plus black king is attacked so it wasn't really making a difference so um the rest of the game um went on but we will not see about how he converted he converted well um and uh, that was the first miniature i wanted to show and uh, for those who play the sicilian to be careful about these ideas and to always look out for these tactics yeah also, by the way, if you still haven't bought, I mentioned it last <laughs> week already, you're material just... imbalances by Svetlana Demchenko. Get it now. Come on. You're just such a promoter. It's, yes, <laughs> it's so sweet. I know. But I really think you should get it. Seriously. I mean. <laughs> That's cute. Anyway. Thank yeah. You. Um... Next miniature. Good. Against another strong master. Yep. And here, Ivanchuk is white against Vallejo Ponce. And once again, another miniature in the Sicilian. Um, mm -hmm. I figured today would just we would just do some Sicilians because uh, there's a lot to learn here. And it is an opening that a lot of people play for both sides. So you can learn it for what not to do from the black side and um, some really powerful ideas from the white side. And this time we see a different type of Sicilian. Do you know what this one is? This is the No, I don't know. It is the Sicilian Khan. The Sicilian Khan? Yeah, you've never heard of it? No. Cuz it's cuz you're not a Sicilian player. Um so <laughs> yeah, we saw before sorry. the Nidor. Yes. This is the Taimanov. Um ah. There's also the Rouser and then there's also Sicilian Khan. And this one is um with e6 and a6. Um, and um, okay. maybe it's it's not like that much in style anymore, although still many players play it and it's a good opening. Um, but uh, one of such reasons, I would say, why people don't play it as much anymore is because of this. Uh, does this one ring a bell? Does the structure look familiar? Well, I play it quite often, but it's kind of a going into the English variation. Um, it has a name... Um, Basically, you would call these two pawns a Marazzi bind. Sounds You've never like heard an of airlines. 
<laughs> yeah, okay. So <laughs> you never heard it before? It's like when pawn on e4 and pawn on c4, and it's kind of like a bind because um white has lots of space and it's very hard for black to do any of the pawn breaks. So the d5 pawn break, the b5 pawn break, which are usual black's usual plans, they're super hard to do with these two pawns just controlling most of the center. Hmm. And I recommend to play this um, for my students as white because I think it's very, very comfortable. And whenever you get the chance, um, you should try it out and have like a slow positional game. Like this one is really like a positional game a lot of the times. And um, this opening is a bit unpleasant from the black side. Uh, but obviously, like it's a very, very old system and it has many ideas of its own. And if it was bad for black, then nobody would have played it. So it's still like double-edged because if black does break through then it's uh, like it can turn around very quickly and it's going to be black who has more initiative and more space okay by the way khan that variation has nothing to do with the karo khan that's something yeah. else i guess and it also has nothing to do with the uh, star trek <laughs> i actually i don't know maybe it's like the same player who was developing karo khan but i I don't know that much about openings history to I th actually... I, th I think he's written with two N's, but uh, yeah, yeah, who knows? Yeah, so it might be a different person. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's not a, a person at all. Small yeah, I don't know what it was named after. <laughs> I only know the names. So, um, yeah, in these lines, as I said, it's really about white taking up space and black just trying to develop with the little space that they have and uh, just trying to make a breakthrough possible at some point. Um, so Ivanchuk really likes his f4 moves, as we noticed. Um, Bishop e3 is a bit more popular, and then playing f4, so that we already know that the knight is confined to the f7, okay. the d7 square. But he just played it right away because he didn't want to maybe... Don't um, waste time, it's a miniature. That's what he thought. Exactly. He already <laughs> knew that he, he knew wanted this to game end quickly. La last long, so he has to. Yeah, maybe <laughs> he was about to play checkers a couple of minutes later. Or maybe something. we never know. But yeah, this one was played at some open. Um, Linares open in, in two thousand and two. Wow, is it open? Yeah, in two thousand two. So long time ago, but still um, a nice game to look at. Um, so white plays now king h one. Mm -hmm. This is a very common move in the Sicilian as well. It's a useful move because we never want um, any trouble along this diagonal. So if you ever have time to play this, like you're not getting attacked immediately or anything, then king h1 is a really useful waiting move to see what the opponent does. We see the rest of the development. Um, yeah, I think games of top players are really useful to look at when you're just learning the ideas of the opening. So... We're not talking just about the theory because learning an opening is not only um, about theory. It's also about seeing how these players have played it. And like maybe you're going to notice that a lot of people have played like this King H1 move. And then you're going to start wondering, like, why do all of them do that? And uh, that's how you learn these ideas more and more. Yeah. So good, this one is, a, is um, a pretty instructive detail, too, that he played Bishop D2 here. Um, he wants to just finish development of his pieces. Um, and uh, he puts the bishop onto like a strange square like that. But um, it's keeping the options open for the rook either wanting to go to e1, to d1, and, and uh, all of that. Um, so you could have also went for a fianchetto bishop, but um, it would be a bit slower. And uh, so he didn't want to waste time, right? Because it was, a, it was going to be a miniature from the start. He plays rook d1. So in this type of structure, as I already said, it's a bit slow, positional, just develop and then start pushing. Um, and that's exactly what white does. Now black decides to play something quicker and hmm. already more, um, you know, more attacking. Yeah. What do you think white needs to do in such a position? Take Can the she... knight on h5 with the queen. No, we have that to... That would be your style. <laughs> we that have would be to... your style. But the... The other style would be to just push forward g4, which is also a bit too early, I guess. But who knows? I mean, come on. We can really <laughs> we can really make something happen here. Maybe we can make your favorite move, 
which is a root like a shift. free one. Uh, no, it's or not we can it. just try to. Ah, yeah, there's many options. I like this yeah. for white. It looks like it's many options, but um, if you really want to keep up like an advantage in such positions, yeah. sometimes it's very direct ways because you need to not let the opponent's ideas happen. And I'll tell you that right away that the opponent's idea is to play e5 here. That's what he wants to do. Uh, attacking on a four and like making some trades in the center. So that's what the opponent wants to do. So we need to prevent that. Well, we could play. No, we couldn't. We cannot play e5 ourselves. We would lose we a can. piece. We can. We can but, but you're right about uh, having a caution there. Um, so what it what was how could you see the piece loss? Well, I see e5 takes takes, and then we move the knight. I don't know to c5. Um, yeah, c5 works too, but we can also we can just um, take. Yeah, I mean c5 doesn't win a piece. We can defend the knight, but um, this one is kind of like the variation that I was talking oh. about. Is that like if I saw this, I wouldn't even go further because like yeah. I mean I'm losing a pawn for no reason, but. There's some really deep ideas here which make white win in the end. Mm. Completely crazy to me, but white apparently is winning with this deep move. Queen e1, watch this, queen e1, and then bishop e2 next. So that's why the queen went to e1, so that the bishop can go to e2. And that is all to open up the uh, rook even more towards the queen. If the queen moves, no problem. We play queen f2 and sure. another deep move. Um, with the f7 threat. And then after this, we play bishop e3, another deep move. Oh, come on. <laughs> with the idea of bishop d4. And apparently this is winning. I think it's a bit, you know, it's a bit crazy to um, have calculated that far. I'm sure Ivancho could have done it. But, uh, I mean, it's just a bit too many random moves one after another. But, you know, e5 was technically working if Okay. Uh, so to say. But what he played in the game made a bit more human sense, which was knight f3. So the exact same idea of e5 later. Okay. Um, and preventing e5 a bit more from the opponent. So that's was what um he did. Um some other ideas were cool, but like too complicated. For example, f5, I thought you would say it. Yeah, but, I thought about that too, of course. But it's like it's a bit too complicated um, to go for this, but white is still better. So it could still be accepted as a good okay. move. Um, so he played knight f3 to prepare to play e5 later. And that's, as I said, an important concept here is to prevent the opponent's breakthroughs mm -hmm. with the pawn because we cannot really allow them to take initiative. And what do you think is going to be Ivanchuk's next plan? We want to soften f7. Good. Yeah, that's true. That's one of the ideas. And how are we doing that? We maybe get the knight to g5. Perfect. That's ah. what he did. You're attacking just like Ivancho. Mr. Vasily. Not Vladimir. Yeah, Vasily. not Vladimir. <laughs> so, <laughs> there's um, too many Vladimirs there's... and Vasilis and whatevers in, <laughs> in chess who are good. Yeah, so... There's already tactics going on. You see that, um, like for example, black does nothing. Then h7 yeah, is hanging. Yeah, that's nice. Right. So that's already a new tactic that's on the horizon. If you're wondering, um, huh, why is this hanging? Because we can take on h5 yeah. with the queen, of course. After that. Yeah, I sometimes skip over the variations, but it's Don't good. Don't worry, that you but because everybody can down. watch it themselves, as I already told you in the chess space news article, we have this analysis and more. So please check it out. Yeah. So the knight goes back to g7 to avoid that tactic. And already you see that the position looks passive, but you know it's also a skill to convert these attacks and it's not always easy to get it right to the end. Um, but uh, we're gonna do it and we're gonna see how um, Ivanchuk did it in the game. So he goes bishop e4 to make this trade of bishops because this bishop was being a bit annoying here with um, pointing towards the king and we don't mind making this trade um so it has been offered and uh, another great move by Vasily is queen f3 so this forces the exchange on e4 because um not even because we want to get rid of the bishop as badly but because we want f6. um at night coming to f6 exactly 
And this is kind of uh, after age six here, this is kind of a critical moment now for, um, for white. It's because um, we're either going to lose that attack or we're going to get it to the end. Yeah. And uh, that's where it gets complicated. I also wanted to mention about the pawn on c4 hanging. I just noticed that it is hanging. Do you see why this pawn could be poisonous? Yeah, I think we can just push the rook to c1. Perfect, yeah. If the queen Oops, takes on a3. Not like <laughs> wow, that happened quickly. If <laughs> that, the queen that goes to nice, b3, no. we take it with our a pawn for the super beginner That's, that's what's today. biased analysis. <laughs> <laughs> now we, yeah. Yeah, we're going to c7 with the rook, I would say. Exactly. And this is just a really powerful idea. Oh. And uh, the rook starts invading. Um, and it's obviously worth even more than these pawns. We're yeah. going to win more than that in uh, in here. For example, yeah, something like that. We're going to win a lot more than that. Mm -hmm. So that's why this pawn was not was actually poisonous and couldn't be taken. Uh, but in the game h6, as I've mentioned, and this was the other critical moment. Um, so he played e takes d6, which makes sense. That's what made the game keep going. G4 was even better, but I think Gosh. I mean, it's just a bit too complex for, uh, for all of us to understand. I feel like it's only the computer who enjoys ideas like that because <laughs> B3. I mean, you know, it's, it's just a bit too much. And Bishop E1, so that's what the computer says was better than what Ivanchuk played. But like, come on, it's uh, B3 and Bishop E1 is just a bit... Is just a bit too much. What he played also makes perfect sense. He takes d6. At least it's forcing. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to do all of that in your head. Queen d8, though. Now I think you can find the next move. Do you think so, huh? I think so. Because there's a lot of good moves. So one of them I think you'll find. Let's think for a second... It looks very tempting to take on f7, but I cannot follow up yet. Yeah, exactly. It's a really weak square, but uh, we can't take there right away. All right, so let's. We have to try something else. What about. What about. Our knight is hanging. Yeah. Don't want that to happen. True. We have to move the knight. Do we? Maybe not. There's only two spaces. Yeah, and they look too passive. Okay, so how about we get our queen to h3? That's exactly what he played. I think you're in tune with uh, Mr. Vasily. Or in your head, it's, it's Vladimir. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's exactly what he played. And that's a really good move and way to continue the attack computer once again likes g4 i don't i don't like it i don't like it either <laughs> but, i don't like the computer <laughs> yeah but it's you know once you already know the right move then you can kind of justify it for yourself because the question is what is black going to do right all of the pieces are kind of stuck and he's limiting that knight on g7 even more mm -hmm. and i mean the, the knights like nobody just has anywhere to go and uh you know, it's just. It, I think that's why it's uh, it's winning. It's because Perhaps. there's just to do. But queen h3, I like that better, and that's what happened in the game. Makes the most sense. After h takes, what are we going to take back with? Kind of important. Yeah, it is. Well, first I have to see if we take with the knight. Well, yeah. uh, now it l suddenly makes sense why g4 is played so often. <laughs> I guess the knight is, can defend. It's the only move to h5, right? Yeah, now you wish that uh, g4 was I actually played I wish I would have there. had this computer move earlier. Yeah. So knight g5 is uh, not as good, I would say, as pawn takes. Because mm -hmm. we you've been talking about this weak f7 square for a while. And also the weak f6 square. Um, and actually, in the game... Um, Valia Hopons played uh, e5, which allowed for a really, really quick finish. Do you see it? I think this one. This one is. Uh, 
is light work after all the variations that you saw earlier. Oh, oh, okay. Now I have to really find it. You will. So... So e5 loses immediately to a simple tactic. Okay. So... Oh. Try to find it. So if you're at home too, right? Stop yeah. the video. Find the ultimate... Vasily Ivanchuk move so i'm looking at knight f6 but i cannot find yeah knight f6 the continuation it takes we mm -hmm. take and then i don't see anything the bishop okay is too maybe stronger. i said it's uh maybe i said it too confident like it's <laughs> a winning tactic but it's not like you're winning a queen or something it's not like you're checkmating you're just aha uh -huh, okay good you're yeah. just gonna be winning in yeah because one. yeah it's, thank you for for doing that i i, I normally <laughs> oh yeah yeah now i see it okay <laughs> that's all it needs it's just yeah. <laughs> that little hint it's not going to be checkmate because it looks like it's yeah. going to get checkmate so yeah. we just take on d7 exactly we just win a piece really nicely like this with um with a fork and uh, this is of course um winning maybe it's not like as clear as we would want it we would want but like a checkmate enough. but two pawns first of all and it's going to be even more pawns than that with rook f7 yeah. and pawn on d6 is just going to make it um, at some point. Pawn on d6, everything is just hanging and this is a winning end game with white just has too many things here. And the game ended here after queen d7 and black resigns. So that was another one of Ivanchuk's um, miniatures. Cute. Do I'm not sure if we have a last time. one. Yes, we, yeah, have we do have a last time. one. We do have a last one. Um, let me see. And this one is going to be <gasps> colors reversed, where no it was a non-playing against Ivanchuk, and um, Ivanchuk took revenge because, well, Anand has beaten him a few times. I would, I would think also in a really nice fashion. Um, so this one was revenge, um, and. That was from 1991. Some yeah, of you who are watching this me. weren't even born. Yeah. Right, Svetlana? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> me included. So, and yeah, okay, what's happening? I now? wanted to show from the black side now how Vasily was employing his Sicilian. And I have to change the title of the whole video. I wanted to write Ivanchuk destroys Sicilians. <laughs> Ah, no. <laughs> Ivanchuk Sicilians. That's how I will probably name it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So this is the third uh, Sicilian miniature, but this time playing... he's with black. Knight I didn't two. want it to be too one sided because, you know, that's like, good. I like that. In Anand's episode, I made people stop playing the Scandinavian. Now I'm going to make some people <laughs> stop playing the Sicilian. What else will there be left? And that's my master plan to make everybody play yeah. the Alakine. <laughs> but uh, because there's because no then you'll have no options left against the Alakine. There's nothing left. Yeah. It's just always no, winning. but uh, yeah, but they're all good <laughs> openings and miniatures happen from both sides, of course. And this time he was playing the Nidor as black. Mm -hmm. And uh, Anand picks a bishop c4 line, um, also a, a good one, always targeting on um, on f7, which often forces black to go for this structure with e6. So yeah. this is called, is it... the... yeah? Yeah, exactly. I just thought if the knight is going to f6, it's a Scheveningen system or something. Or yeah, it... yeah. This this pawn structure, I would call it the Shevinengen Sicilian pawn structure. Pawn okay. structure. Yeah, okay, okay. because you know how in Nidorf we often go with like e5. Yes. Or black. So whenever it's like this, I would um, whenever pawns are on d6 and e6, I call it the Shevinengen Sicilian. All right. Maybe there's right. better ways to classify it, but that's how I see it with sure, these sure. pawns. Um, that's what I would call it. So. The game went with uh, with white castling, black just developing pieces, f4. So uh -oh. we already have seen this from the white side that white has his own ideas on the attack on the queen side, on the king side, sorry. So he's going to attack with his f4 pawns. Um, what do you think white, blacks, what do you think black's usual ideas are in response to that attack? Hmm. Well, e5. 
in general terms um yeah sure so a t counter attacking in the center is a big one so um whenever we're getting attacked on one side of the board usually the good rule is that you counter attack in the center or also on the opposite side so we could also counter attack on the queen side if it helps but definitely the center is the main target so black develops with b5 this one is just to develop the bishop to b7 and to also have b4 threats this is a very common move yeah. in the in the sicilian now white goes f5 which is a bit of um like i know this was played a while ago but nowadays the engine doesn't love this line it's still played a lot though it has a lot of games that have gone on um so white had other ideas that i think are I think this one is a bit more preferable, this e5 line, but it's super tactical, super complicated. We can even play knight c6 stuff and win it back like that. But um, there's many different lines. He played f5 um, and he, he got met with b4. Knight a4, now we can already see that the tactics are starting to heat up and things are starting to hang. So how do you think we're going to react to this... Um, Red of white. We offer a draw. That that's always <laughs> a safe bet for sure. But you know how like you need to make a move and then offer a draw. Oh yeah. So I would have made it wrong and what lost the game. <laughs> we could can we push forward on e5 now? Yeah, it's a good idea. And here it's not as weakening as it normally would be because the knight is no longer on c3 and now there's no way to take advantage of this d5 square. So usually we need to be careful about these e5 moves if there's ever like, you know, if we're ever giving up the d5 square, then it's like positionally not a good decision. But here it is because the knight is already gone. So that's an important detail. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad you didn't fall for knight e4 because this one would not be nice. You know, these are not the pawns it. that we yeah. take. <laughs> these are just not good pawns to take. That's what I mean because of... Um, yeah, yeah, I have too good intuition to already know this cannot work for some reason. Yeah. Oh gosh. Exactly. Yeah, it's because of this lack of development and that weak diagonal. So um, this one is not usually good for the like squares, right? You're giving up the f5 square and just like opening up yeah. for no reason. So that one doesn't look good. So your your choice was actually the best. And uh, right. now is my next question. Would you take on e4 at this point? No. Time? No? No. So instead, you would just continue developing? Yeah. That's what he played in the game, but it was possible <laughs> to take on e4. Oh, you can't just take it. So both of the answers are right. So either you play like Anand or you just win a pawn pretty, okay. um, you know, safely. But this one is like more ambiguous and like more complicated. Because then you might start to get attacked like that. Whoopsie. But, but yeah, it's still oh. Oh. it's long. It's forcing. I know I'm going fast, but it's forced. And sure. What my whole point was that it's complicated. Sure. Black is up a pawn, but the position isn't clear. So right. you could say that you're going to take it and play it, that position. Or you could just develop, which is what he did in the game. Why is it that no. there's so many crazy, interesting, funky variations in the Sicilian? It's like it's, never ending. Yeah, it's because it's that uh, type of opening. It's very tactical, very dynamic, and it's um, double-edged for both sides. Both white and black can play it for like a win and for an advantage straight um, out of the opening. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now we see Queen one This is the first non like highly theoretical move that was played in this game. Although I'm sure back then the theory was not that advanced. Um, so they might have just played this whole thing from like not even from theory, even though now it became theory, but before it was not. And um here uh black just defended the pawn. I'll go on a bit more with the game because it's uh Normal developing moves. Knight c5, what do you think the evaluation would be? Zero like point for what? zero zero. Okay, sure. You like it for, for <laughs> you don't like it for any side. I don't know. I would probably like it for white. I would love okay. to be white here. 
just because of the attack? No, yeah, because, yeah, look, my pawn on d6 looks weird. My bishops are not that strong. I have... I, I look more attacking on the king's side. All of that mm -hmm. plays a little bit of a role for me. I don't see any... Well, I'm obviously wrong. Otherwise, people <clears> wouldn't <throat> play it for millions and millions of games. Exactly this variation. Probably there's at least... 10 or 20 people who are watching this right now who had exactly this position on the board, maybe even. I mean, this was a bit far into the yeah? game, but okay. yeah. Anyway. But it's, yeah, it's, I would say it's pleasant for black just because, I mean, I like these pawns. I would just grab them, but <laughs> he didn't do it in the so game. Maybe brave. he just, he didn't want to, uh, but <laughs> I would like it. I would like having an extra pawn for black. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, this one is a bit of a longer miniature. It was still like 30 moves, but so not like oh. 15. But um, a lot of these are just maneuvers, which is why I'm yeah, yeah, going I'll over go, them. Go just over them. We're, let's yeah. get to the crucial... The, yeah, this next move I like. The next one That's already a hint. Okay. I like it. Activating a piece that is not working yet. The what do you think it could be for A6. Black? You got it. I think it was a big hit to say that I like this move. I like the rook lifts. So um, rook a6 is a nice way to activate wow. it, going to c6. And this next maneuver is the one of a piece that could stand better. I don't think you're going to um, like you're gonna guess it because you're not a S Sicilian player, but queen b8. Have you ever seen this queen Gosh. b8 and queen a8 maneuver? Oh, yeah, maybe I have, yeah. Yeah, so that's one is very common in the Sicilian. Also something to True. remember if you're ever a Sicilian player is whenever you're attacking this um, e4 pawn, it's very common to play this queen to a8 maneuver. Uh, if you have time for that, of course. Um, and now there's an important trade that black is going to do. What do you think it is? Knight what kind of trade? G4. Exactly. And really? you know, yeah. <laughs> It was just, okay, cool. You know that the knight... Uh, sorry, the dark squared bishop is usually the best piece for for white. Oh, okay. No, I didn't it's, know that. Well, I mean, just Until compare now. the dark squared bishop and the light squared bishop. Let's compare. You're yeah, right. <laughs> and True, the dark yeah, squared yeah, bishop of course, of course. is a nice one to trade. Finally, we're getting to the more tactical portion is when black is actually tr starting to get to the attacking part. And uh, of course, we're making this trade and making the king run. And, uh, I mean, yeah, the king does, isn't running anywhere yet. But suddenly, you'll see in a few moves, it does. So, after this check, oh. we realize that it doesn't really have much places to go. Yeah. You can't really cover it because of knight g4. So, you actually end up going to e2. And that's what happened in the game. Maybe Anand was feeling brave. Feeling nice about his king and not really in danger. But... Um, he just made this bishop d1 move, which was the final mistake. And, and you know, you see how the pieces just, like, stand a bit weirdly. And it's, uh, it doesn't look like there's anything yet because of his Marazzi, like, bind type of, like, structure. Where, like, Black doesn't have breakthroughs, so it could be safe. But Ivanchuk found one. What do you think it is? Yeah. Well, if you ask me like that... <sighs> It looks like it's d5. It is d5. Do I give too many hints when I ask? No. I think it's just the right amount to make me feel okay. good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Nice. So d5 is a really nice breakthrough here. So good job for finding it. Thank you. And uh, it uh, actually opens up the game really, really well. So um, in whichever capture, get, whichever capture happens we still end up capturing it back and sacrificing yet another um it has you know, to be taken yeah oh, has to oh be taken. with the rook okay oh you're surprised about the rook yeah, yeah it no, is i'm not that surprised but i mean there's so many options that i didn't calculate this one there are options but it's oftentimes i think in this game it was a lot of these moves were only moves that were winning okay so it was a bit complicated um huh but it's a very natural move, just joining more pieces into the attack. Oh, this knight is not working gosh. and all of that. So this one I is remember, just... I've seen this game once upon a time. So really? many. Yeah, yeah. I've seen this exact diagram, I think. 
Oh, um, that's nice. I, I, in the 90s, I've been reading the chess magazine a lot of times. Mm, so, okay. yeah, this looks so familiar. How funny. Yeah. So there are a lot more good moves, more wins that, like, we could also solve. Uh, but I think I'll just solve the one, like, I'll just make you solve the one that happened in the game. So what would you play after Rook C2? After Rook C2, I would play... Remember, checks, captures, and threats is yeah. how I like to solve tactics. So, I, of course, it looks very tempting to take on D2. Yeah, and with take what? again with, with the bishop. Mm, with the bishop? Yeah. Good. That's what happened in the game. And actually, um, I'm playing White like, resigned. I'm playing like Ivan Chuk, my goodness. You... You are. You, you're just guessing all the moves. But he resigned here. But let's see why. So, Rook here. Uh, we take. Okay. On D2. This, though. And Queen F2 was my idea. But then... I would not be too convinced by this, I think. Because what if I just defend? Yeah, I know. You could just So, defend. it wasn't... So it wasn't rook okay. takes. Okay, let me think again. Put some links on So I think you just forgot about what the rest. About pieces. Is this work? No, the other way around it's not working, is it? Queen no. F two is not working, no. Yeah, that's a bit too much of a sacrifice, but you don't even need to sacrifice anything. Do I not? Hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. it's a check on B five, yeah. Exactly. I think it's a bit of like difficult to switch between like um, sacrificing and bishop. Not sacrificing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but bishop b five and it's just wins because um, we gain back some material um, and of course with a king like this on f three there is just no way that it can be saved and a lot of mate threats coming up rook d three so um, that's basically how the game ended. This one was a bit longer because it included some maneuvering, which I do recommend, you know, checking out still like a bit slower than uh, we went through it because I wanted to get to the final moment. <laughs> but um, but yeah, there's a lot to learn from the games of Ivanchuk and especially um, if you saw any of the Sicilians that you play, um, you can learn see which see how he has played it how uh he was beating very strong players with it and maybe you could use some of these ideas later and have some miniatures of your own love it dear svetlana thank you so much for this cool lesson how to destroy the sicilian a la ivanchuk and how to also win with the sicilian a la ivanchuk yeah. uh thanks for watching everybody we see each other soon again bye bye <laughs>